Hi, Rolling Park readers, and welcome to Storytime Online. It's wonderful to see you tonight. I know I wasn't able to record any new chapters from Charlotte's Web yesterday. Um, yesterday, I had some volunteering, some schoolwork that got in the way of making my recording for you. However, we're back again tonight. I know it's rainy, so most of us have been inside, but to me, that means it is the perfect weather to curl up with a good book, and we've been reading Charlotte's Web together. So if you're just tuning in, if you haven't tuned in for a while, um, we are in the middle of this book, so definitely go back and listen to those other chapters because we are close to the end. This is all we have left to read in our story. Um, and we actually left off, I usually read to the end of a chapter for you, but I left off in the middle of a chapter, and the chapter was called off to the fair. So Wilbur was getting ready to go to the fair. Everyone was super excited. The Zuckermans, Mrs. Zuckerman gave him a buttermilk bath and the animals were talking to him because he was going to go by himself. And then Charlotte has an interruption. So let's sit back, cozy up, and enjoy tonight's chapters. Just then, Charlotte interrupted. I shall go too, she said softly. I have decided to go with Wilbur. He may need me. We can't tell what may happen at the fairgrounds. Somebody's got to go along who knows how to write. And I think Templeton better come too. I might need somebody to run errands and go do general work. I'm staying right here, grumbled the rat. I haven't the slightest interest in fairs. That's because you've never been to one, remarked the old sheep. A fair is a rat's paradise. Everybody spills food at a fair. A rat can creep out late at night and have a feast. In those horse barn, in the horse barn, you will find oats that the trotters and pacers have spilled. In the trampled grass in the infield, you'll find old discarded lunch boxes containing the foul remains of peanut butter sandwiches, hard boiled eggs, cracker crumbs, bits of donuts, and particles of cheese. In the hand, the hard packed dirt of the midway, after the glaring lights are out and the people have gone home to bed, you will find the venerable treasure of popcorn fragments, frozen custard drippings, candied apples abandoned by tired children, sugar fluff crystals, salted almonds, popsicles, partially gnawed ice cream cones, and the wooden sticks of lollipops. Everywhere is loot for a rat. In tents, in booze, in haylofts. Why, a fair has enough disgusting leftover food to satisfy a whole army of rats. Templeton's eyes were ablaze. Is this true, he asked? Is this appetizing yarn of yours true? I like high living, and what you say tempts me. It is true, said the old sheep. Go to the fair, Templeton. You will find that the conditions at a fair will surpass your wildest dreams. Buckets with sour smash sticking to them, tin cans containing particles of tuna fish, greasy paper bags stuffed with rotten... That's enough, cried Templeton. Don't tell me any more. I'm going. Good, said Charlotte, winking at the old sheep. Now then, there is no time to be lost. Wilbur soon will be put into the crate. Templeton and I must go in the crate right now and hide ourselves. The rat didn't waste a minute. He scampered over to the crate, crawled between the slats, and pulled straw up over him so he was hidden from sight. All right, said Charlotte. I'm next. She sailed into the air, let out a drag line, and dropped gently to the ground. Then she climbed the side of the crate and hid herself inside a knot hole in the top board. The old sheep nodded. What a cargo, she said. That sign ought to say Zuckerman's famous pig and two stowaways. Look out, the people are coming. Umming, umming, shouted the gander. Cheese it, cheese it, cheese it. <clears throat> the big truck with Mr. Arable at the wheel backed slowly down toward the barnyard. Lurvy, Mr. Zuckerman, walked alongside. Fern and Avery were standing in the body of the trunk, hanging on to the sideboards. <clears throat> Listen to me, whispered the old sheep to Wilbur, when they open the crate and try to put you in. Struggle. Don't go without a tussle. Pigs always resist when they are being loaded. If I struggle, I'll get dirty, said Wilbur. Never mind that. Do as I say. Struggle. If you were to walk into the crate without resisting, Zuckerman might think that you were bewitched. He'd be scared to go to the fair. 
Templeton poked his head through the straw. Struggle if you must, he said, but kindly remember that I'm hiding down here in this crate, and I don't want to be stepped on or kicked in the face or pummeled or crushed in any way, or squashed, or buffeted about, or bruised, or lacerated, or scarred, or biffed. Just watch what you're doing, Mr. Radiant, when they go shoving you in. Be quiet, Templeton, said the sheep. Pull in your head. They're coming. Look, Radiant Wilbur, lay low, Charlotte. Talk it up, geese. The truck backed slowly to the pig pen and stopped. Mr. Airbell cut the motor and got out, walked around the rear, and lowered the tailgate. The geese cheered. Mrs. Airbell got out of the truck. Fern and Avery jumped to the ground. Mrs. Zuckerman came walking down from the house. Everybody lined up at the fence and stood for a moment, admiring Wilbur and the beautiful green crate. Nobody realized that the crate already contained a rat and a spider. That's some pig, said Mrs. Arable. He's terrific, said Lurvy. He's very radiant, said Fern, remembering the day he was born. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, he's clean anyway. The buttermilk certainly helped. Mr. Arable studied Wilbur carefully. Yes, he's a wonderful pig, he said. It's hard to believe that he was the runt of the litter. You'll get some extra good ham and bacon, Homer, when it comes to time to kill that pig. Wilbur heard these words and his heart almost stopped. I think I'm going to faint, he whispered to the old sheep who was watching. Kneel down, whispered the old sheep. Let the blood rush to your head. Wilbur sank to his knees, all radiance gone. His eyes closed. Look, screamed Fern. He's fading away. <clears throat> hey, watch me, yelled Avery, crawling on all fours in the crate. I'm a pig, I'm a pig. Avery's foot touched Templeton under the straw. What a mess, thought the rat. What fantastic creatures boy, boys are. Why did I let myself in for this? The geese saw Avery in the crate and cheered. Avery, you get out of that crate this instant, commanded his mother. What do you think you are? I'm a pig, cried Avery, tossing handfuls of straw into the air. Oink, 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 oink. The truck was rolling away. Oh, I'm sorry. The truck is rolling away, Papa, said Fern. The truck, with no one at the wheel, had started to roll downhill. Mr. Arabal dashed the driver's seat and pulled on the, the emergency brake. The truck stopped. The geese cheered. Charlotte crouched and made herself as small as possible in the knothole so Avery wouldn't see her. Come out at once, cried Mrs. Arabal. Avery crawled out of the crate on hands and knees, making faces at Wilbur. Wilbur fainted away. The pig has passed out, said Mrs. Zuckerman. Throw water on him. <clears throat> Throw buttermilk, suggested Avery. The geese cheered. Lurvy ran for a pail of water. Fern climbed to the pen and knelt by Wilbur's side. It's sunstroke, said Zuckerman. The heat is too much for him. Maybe he's dead, said Avery. Come out of that pig pen immediately, cried Mrs. Arabel. Avery obeyed his mother and climbed into the back of the truck so he could see better. Lurvy returned with cold water and dashed it on Wilbur. Throw some on me, cried Avery. I'm hot too. Oh, keep quiet, hollered Fern. Keep quiet. Her eyes were brimming with tears. Wilbur, feeling the cold water, came too. He rose slowly to his feet while the geese cheered. He's up, said Mr. Arable. <clears throat> I guess there's nothing wrong with him. I'm hungry, said Avery. I want a candied apple. Wilbur's all right now, said Fern. We can start. I want to take a ride in the Ferris wheel. Mr. Zuckerman and Mr. Arabelle and Lurvy grabbed the pig and pushed him head first toward the crate. Wilbur began to struggle. The harder the men pushed, the harder he held back. Avery jumped down and joined the men. Wilbur kicked and thrashed and grunted. Nothing wrong with this pig, said Zuckerman cheerfully, pressing his knee against Wilbur's behind. All together now, boys, shove! With a final heave, they jammed him into the crate. The geese cheered. Lurvy nailed some boards across the end so Wilbur couldn't back out. And then, using all their strength, the men picked up the crate and heaved it abroad, oh, aboard the truck. They did not know that under the straw was a rat, and inside a knot hole was a big gray spider. They saw only a pig. Everybody in, called Mr. Arable. 
He started the motor. The ladies climbed in beside him. Mr. Zuckerman and Lurvy and Fern and Avery rode in the back, hanging on to the sideboards. The truck began to move ahead. The geese cheered. The children answered their cheer, and away went everybody to the fair. Chapter 17, Uncle. When they pulled into the fairgrounds, they could hear music and see the Ferris wheel turning in the sky. They could smell the dust of the racetrack where the sprinkling cart had moistened it, and they could smell hamburgers frying and see balloons aloft. They could hear sheep blatting in the pens. An enormous voice over the loudspeaker said, Attention, please! Will the owner of a Pontiac car, license number H2439, please move your car away from the fireworks shed? Can I have some money? asked Fern. Can I too? asked Avery. I'm going to win a doll by spinning a wheel, and it will stop at the right number, said Fern. I'm going to steer a jet plane and make it bump into another one. Can I have a balloon? asked Fern. Can I have a frozen custard and a cheeseburger and some raspberry soda pop? asked Avery. You children, be quiet till we get the pig unloaded, said Mrs. Arabel. Let's let the children go off by themselves, suggested Mr. Arabel. The fair only comes once a year. Mr. Arabel gave Fern two quarters and two dimes. He gave Avery five dimes and four nickels. Now run along, he said, and remember, the money has to last all day. Don't spend it all the first few minutes. And be back here at the truck at, the, at noontime so we can all have lunch together. And don't eat a lot of stuff that's going to make you sick to your stomachs. And if you go in those swings, said Mrs. Arabel, you hang on tight. You hang on very tight. Hear me? And don't get lost, said Mrs. Zuckerman, and don't get dirty. Don't get overheated, said their mother. Watch out for pickpockets, cautioned their father. And don't cross the racetrack when the horses are coming, cried Mrs. Zuckerman. The children grabbed each other by the hand and danced off in the direction of the merry-go-round toward the wonderful music and the wonderful adventure and the wonderful excitement into the wonderful midway where there would be no parents no, to guard them and guide them and where they would be happy and free to do as they pleased. Mrs. Arable stood quietly and watched them go. Then she sighed and she blew her nose. And that's Fern and Avery. Do you really think it's all right? She asked. Well, they've got to grow up sometimes, said Mr. Arabel, and a fair is a good place to start, I guess. While Wilbur was being unloaded and taken out of his crate and into his new pig pen, crowds gathered to watch. They stared at the sign, Zuckerman's Famous Pig. Wilbur stared back and tried to look extra good. He was pleased with his new home. The pen was grassy and was shaded from the sun by a shed roof. Charlotte, watching her chance, scrambled out of the crate and climbed a post to the, under, the, mm, under the side of the roof. Nobody noticed her. Templeton, not wishing to come out in broad daylight, stayed quietly under the straw at the bottom of the crate. Mr. Zuckerman poured some milk into Wilbur's trough, pitched clean straw into his pen, and then he and Mrs. Zuckerman and the Arables walked away toward the cattle barn to look at the purebred cows and to see the sights. Mr. Zuckerman particularly wanted to look at tractors. Mrs. Zuckerman wanted to see a deep freeze. Lurvy wandered off by himself, hoping to meet friends and have some fun on the midway. As soon as the people were gone, Charlotte spoke to Wilbur. It's a good thing you can't see what I see, she said. What do you see? asked Wilbur. There's a pig in the next pen, and he's enormous. I'm afraid he's much bigger than you are. Maybe he's older than I am and has had more time to grow, suggested Wilbur. Tears began to come to his eyes. I'll drop down and have a closer look, Charlotte said. Then she crawled along a beam till she was directly over the next pen. She let herself down on a drag line until she hung in the air just in front of the big pig's snout. May I have your name? she asked politely. The pig stared at her. No name, he said in a big, hearty voice. Just call me Uncle. And there's that big next-door neighbor pig. 
Very well, uncle, replied Charlotte. What is the date of your birth? Are you a spring pig? Sure, I'm a spring pig, replied uncle. What did you think I was, a spring chicken? Ha, ha, ha. That's a good one, eh, sister? Mildly funny, said Charlotte. I've heard funnier ones, though. Glad to have met you, and now I must be going. She ascended slowly and returned to Wilbur's pen. He claims he's a spring pig, reported Charlotte, and perhaps he is. One thing is certain, he has a most unattractive personality. He is too familiar, too noisy, and he cracks weak jokes. Also, he's not anywhere near as clean as you are, nor as pleasant. I took quite a dislike to him in our brief interview. He's going to be a hard pig to beat, though, Wilbur, on account of his size and weight. But with me helping you, it can be done. Then are you going to spin a web? asked Wilbur. This afternoon, late, if I'm not too tired, said Charlotte. And the least thing tires me these days. I don't seem to have energy I once had. My age, I guess. Wilbur looked at his friend. She looked rather sw swollen. And she seemed listless. I'm awfully sorry to hear that you're feeling poorly, Charlotte, he said. Perhaps if you spin a web and catch a couple of flies, you'll feel better. Perhaps, she said wearily. But I feel like the end of a long day. Clinging upside down to the ceiling, she settled down for a nap, leaving Wilbur very much worried. All morning, people wandered past Wilbur's web. Dozens and dozens of strangers stopped to stare at him and to admire his silky white coat, his curly tail, his kind and radiant expression. Then they would move on to the next pig, where the bigger pig lay. Wilbur heard several people make favorable remarks about Uncle's great size. He couldn't help overhearing these remarks, and he couldn't help worrying. And now, with Charlotte not feeling well, he thought... Oh, dear. All morning, Templeton slept quietly under the straw. The day grew fiercely hot. At noon, the Zuckermans and the Arables returned to the pig pen. Then, a few minutes later, Fern and Avery showed up. Fern had a monkey doll in her arms and was eating Cracker Jack. Avery had a balloon tied to his ear and was chewing a candied apple. The children were hot and dirty. Isn't it hot? <laughs> said Mrs. Zuckerman. It's terribly hot, said Mrs. Arable, fanning herself with an advertisement of a deep freeze. One by one, they climbed into the truck and opened lunch boxes. The sun beat down on everything. Nobody seemed hungry. When are the judges going to decide about Wilbur? asked Mrs. Zuckerman. Not till tomorrow, said Mr. Zuckerman. Lurvy appeared, carrying an Indian blanket that he had won. What's, that's just what we need, said Avery, a blanket. Of course it is, replied Lurvy, and he spread the blanket across the sideboards of the truck so that it was a little tent. The children sat in the shade under the blanket and felt better. After lunch, they stretched out and fell asleep. This is our final chapter for tonight. We're going to read chapter 18, The Cool of the Evening. In the cool of the evening, when shadows darkened the fairgrounds, Templeton crept from the crate and looked around. Wilbur lay asleep in the straw. Charlotte was building a web. Templeton's keen nose detected many fine smells in the air. The rat was hungry and thirsty. He decided to go exploring. Without saying anything to anybody, he started off. Bring me back a word, Charlotte called after him. I shall be writing tonight for the last time. The rat mumbled something to himself and disappeared into the shadows. He did not like being treated like a messenger boy. After the heat of the day, the evening came as a welcome relief to all. The Ferris wheel was lightened now. It went round and around in the sky and seemed twice as high as by day. There were lights on the midway, and you could hear the crackle of the gambling machines and the music of the merry-go-round and the voice of the man at the Beano booth calling numbers. The children felt refreshed after their nap. Fern met her friend, Henry Fussy, and he invited her to ride with him in the Ferris wheel. He even bought a ticket for her, so it didn't cost her anything. When Mrs. Arabel happened to look up into the starry sky and saw her little daughter sitting with Henry Fussy and going higher and higher into the sky and saw how happy Fern looked, she just shook her head. My, my, she said, Henry Fussy, think of that.
Templeton kept out of sight. In the tall grass behind the cattle barn, he found a folded newspaper, and inside were leftovers from somebody's lunch. A deviled ham sandwich, a piece of Swiss cheese, part of a hard-boiled egg, and the core of a wormy apple. The rat crawled in and ate everything. And then he tore a word out of the paper, rolled it up, and started back to Wilbur's pen. And here, can you see the word that he said? That's right. Charlotte had her web almost finished when Templeton returned, carrying the newspaper clipping. She had left a space in the middle of the web. At this hour, no people were around the pig pen, so the rat and the spider and the pig were by themselves. I hope you brought a good one, Charlotte said. It is the last word I shall ever write. Here, said Templeton, unrolling the paper. What does it say? asked Charlotte. You'll have to read it for me. It says humble, replied the rat. Humble, said Charlotte. Humble has two meanings. It means not proud, and it means near the ground. Well, that's Wilbur all over. He's not proud, and he is near the ground. Well, I hope you're satisfied, sneered the rat. I'm not going to spend all my time fetching and carrying. I came to this fair to enjoy myself, not to deliver papers. You've been very helpful, Charlotte said. Run along if you want to see more of the fair. The rat grinned. I'm going to make a night of it, he said. The old sheep was right. This fair is a rat's paradise. What eating and what drinking and everywhere. Good hiding and good hunting. Bye-bye, my humble Wilbur. Fare thee well, Charlotte, you old schemer. This will be a night to remember in a rat's life. He vanished into the shadows. Charlotte went back to her work. It was quite dark now. In the distance, fireworks began going off, rockets scattering fiery balls in the sky. By the time the Arables and the Zuckermans and Lurvy returned from the grandstand, Charlotte had finished her web. The word humble was woven neatly in the center. Nobody noticed it in the darkness. Everyone was tired and happy. And here's an illustration of Templeton before he went off to the fair. Fern and Avery climbed into the truck and lay down. They pulled the Indian blanket over them. Lurvy gave Wilbur a forkful of fresh straw. Mr. Arabelle patted him. Time for us to go home, he said to the pig. See you tomorrow. The grown-ups climbed slowly into the truck, and Wilbur heard the engine start and then heard the truck moving away in low speed. He would have felt lonely and homesick had Charlotte not been with him. He never felt lonely when he, she was near. In the distance, he could still hear the music of the merry-go-round. As he was dropping off to sleep, he spoke to Charlotte. Sing me that song again about the dung in the dark, he begged. Not tonight, she said in a low voice. I'm too tired. Her voice didn't seem to come from her web. Where are you? asked Wilbur. I can't see you. Are you on your web? I'm back here, she answered. Up in this back corner. Why aren't you on your web? asked Wilbur. You almost never leave your web. I've left it tonight, she said. Wilbur closed his eyes. Charlotte, he said after a while. Do you really think Zuckerman will let me live and not kill me when the cold weather comes. Do you really think so? Of course, said Charlotte. You are a famous pig, and you are a good pig. Tomorrow, you will probably win a prize, and the whole world will hear about you. Zuckerman will be proud and happy to own such a pig. You have nothing to fear, Wilbur. Nothing to worry about. Maybe you'll live forever. Who knows? And now, Go to sleep. For a while, there was no sound. Then Wilbur's voice. What are you doing up there, Charlotte? Oh, making something, she said. Making something as usual. Is it something for me? Asked Wilbur. No, said Charlotte. It's something for me, for a change. Please tell me what it is, begged Wilbur. I'll tell you in the morning, she said. When the first light comes into the sky and the sparrows stir and the cows rattle their chains, when the rooster crows and the stars fade, when early cars whisper along the highway, you look up here and I'll show you something, 
I will show you my masterpiece. Before she finished the sentence, Wilbur was asleep. She could tell by the sound of his breathing that he was sleeping peacefully, deep in the straw. Miles away at the Arable's house, the men sat around the kitchen table eating a dish of canned peaches and talking over the events of the day. Upstairs, Avery was already in bed and asleep. Mrs. Arable was tucking Fern into bed. Did you have a good time at the fair? She asked as she kissed her daughter. Fern nodded. I had the best time I have ever had anywhere or any time in all my whole life. Well, said Mrs. Arable, isn't that nice? That is the end of the chapter for tonight. So tomorrow we will come back and we will listen to chapter 19. Um, and I'm not going to tell you the title because it's going to give away um, something that Charlotte was making. So for tonight, I'm so glad that you could join me. For sweet dreams and happy reading.